to do is, is listen to one of my next guest's records. He'd have a lot to choose from since he sold over 90 million records. Here is Frankie Valley. <laughs> You go on that Nick over here, and, and then uh, let's see. Uh, John, you sit. If you'll sit over there, I'll give him. Nick, you go on. No, no, this is all right. This is all right. How are you? I'm fine. Terrific. You went back. Did you go back east for your uh, family reunion? Yes, I did. I went back for uh, Thanksgiving, and it was terrific. Uh, there's some, just something very special about oh, going back sure, east. I mean, yeah. I, I guess I'll always be an easterner. Well, that's, that's where your roots are. Yeah. Man. I mean, you got to go back. Is it true that you, your the four seasons are gonna? Get their act uh, together? Yes, we've been getting a lot of mail oh, in the man. past, though, I guess, uh, the past year and a half or so since we we finally decided to break it up completely. And lots of people want to know why we've never done a live album. So we're talking about doing a uh, a reunion kind of tour. Where? And we'll see what happens. We're going to do a worldwide tour. Well, where would you do the album? Uh, we'll probably do it in various parts of the world. We'll start off in, in England. I think we're going to go out for 10 days. In April. Where were you people? I'm curious because you guys grew up in that era. Where were you when you heard your first Frankie Valley record? Can you remember, John? I remember exactly. I was in my friend Jeff Joseph's house and we heard Big Girls Don't Cry. And, and it just, I mean, it was just, there you go. No, I mean, all the stuff. We just kept walking around. So it was just, you, you were in our blood, man. I thought he was going to say he was in his crib. <laughs> No, it was before my voice changed, though. <laughs> Could you tell me your wife's first name so I don't call her Legs? Legs. Oh, uh, Sharon. 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 Where were I you? I was uh, probably at that time. Uh, you were born. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, at Pickwick Pool, you know, remember, over in Burbank? Yes. Yes, of course. Horseback riding. And, and roller uh, laying out, you know, hanging out with all the older kids and falling in love with everybody, hearing your voice, oh. and always wanted to meet you on... God, I'm glad I did. Thank you. How about you, Nick? Where were you? I was in Omaha, Nebraska, drinking beer with a bunch of guys. <laughs> Down in the basement here in the cabaret no. was I having fun. Yeah. I won not a front of death. And I won on the run. Drinking beer with her because we skipped school on Friday, and this week and one night, I'd get a, you know, fiddle with a guitar, and we'd have that little radio right there, and we'd drink beer, and her guy would pretend, and I, you know, and I'd stomp my foot and stuff like that. That's, that's wonderful. Because you know, uh, that's uh, you, in the you, 50s, right? Oh, sure. Uh, 60s, early, early 60s. 60s. Early 60s. Well, I was just out of high school, yeah. 59, graduated. So, oh, we've had a lot of fun, you know, doing, doing the kind of music that we've done. We've always. Uh, done what I consider to be fun music, uh, the kind of music that, you know, people could uh, sing along with. Uh, it's been terrific. I mean, to you, you know what I'd like to talk to him about? He grew up, he, and, and it took, he's not an overnight success. I mean, you really paid your dues, as they say in Detroit. But the best story this guy ever told me was that he needed a job one time, and he went in and the guy said, well, okay, you can sing, but I need a bass player. Frankie said, and he never had a bass in his hands. I play bass, and he faked the True story, you know, right. Boom, boom, those awful notes, and finally learned why. Well, yeah, right. But uh, anything, you tell anything to get a job. Well, in those days, I mean, I wanted to get into show business so bad, and, and my father, every time I talk show business, he said, what do you mean? You gotta get a real job. And uh, a real job went to him was uh, one that you got up at you got seven in the morning, every week, and right? Clock at eight. And Did you ever have a real job? Oh, sure, several real jobs. Uh, let's see, I was. Were you uh, good at any of them? For oh, sure, I was a hairdresser for three years. You're kidding? Sure. Man. How did you, know, you had that as a trade? You had to learn. Yes, about, I right? had to go to school to learn that. It was in, in a period of time where I'd gotten very disgusted with the music business. It wasn't happening, and I had to do something that gave me a little security. Uh, I, I worked construction uh, for about four and a half minutes. I was working, <laughs> I was working with a, a concrete gang, and, and they were pouring, you know, for, for uh, uh, on a high rise, they would pour all the floors and the walls would be all poured concrete in those days. And here I am carrying this uh, four by eight sheet of plywood, and a gust of wind comes along and picks me up. <laughs> With the plywood. Right, and I'm about 10 feet in the air, I mean, <laughs> heading for 
over the building. And you weren't one of the Wright brothers at the time. Right, so I just let go of the plywood very quickly and and fell down and and nothing really. My favorite story is, will you hear this? You were a janitor once, man. Right, I was. Tell that story that is priceless. Have you ever told that story? Oh, no, I never have. (laughs) Will you hear this? It's, uh... Uh, in one period of time, I took a job for the city of Newark as a building maintenance repairman. And <laughs> it was, it was kind of a, a, you know, a fill-in job uh, uh, to, keep, to support my family. And uh, when, I, when success finally came, I left the job, but I, I worked in one of the housing projects in Newark, and I was working at the Paramount Theater. In New York? Right. And here we are, we're coming out of that big moment. Okay, come out, and I hear a kid in the audience. Hey, I know that man. That's my janitor in my building. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. I mean, I wanted to crawl right in the piano. When did you? When did you know that you had made it? You were a success, Frank. I think I knew when uh, somebody told me. I think for the first couple of years. Uh, I just couldn't believe what was going on, so I, I, uh, I had no idea of what was going on. I didn't buy my, my first new car until, in 62 it happened, I bought my first new car, and 64, and I took more heat from everybody about driving around in this 1957 Chrysler that was falling apart. <laughs> I mean, it was literally Did you buy your folks a house? Uh, I tried to do that for a very long time, and, uh, uh, my folks have lived in, in the, uh, the same apartment now for, oh, I guess, 35 or 40 years. And they just... Uh, and they, they turned they it into a condominium to by now? They refuse to move. They, my mother especially feels that all her friends are there. And uh, going somewhere else uh, uh, where, she knew, where she knows nobody would be like starting all over again. So she feels comfortable there. She's got everything... It's hard to change their habits and their, and their ways. I bought my it's mother. It's not hard. It's impossible. Yeah. I bought, my, bought, bought my mom and dad a house, and then and then I bought them a washer and dryer. And they called one day, and dad said, uh, "I said, is mother there?" And he said, "Yes, but she can't come to the phone." I said, "Why not?" He says, "She's sitting in front of the washer, waiting for the cycle to change." <laughs> and I said, "Why is she doing that?" He said, "Because she's never seen that before. She's watching it like a soap opera." Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally, I mean, she's so intrigued. I've never seen anything like that before. And the thing was changing cycles. My father is, is really wild because uh, uh, with him being against me really getting involved in, in, in the music business, uh, after it happened, uh, you know, he was as proud as a, as a peacock. But the, the things he would say to me, you know, whenever we would release a new record and I'd go over the house and uh, you, know, you hear the same questions over and over again and, and you, you don't mean to take anything out on anybody. I mean, making records and getting them played over the radio is not the easiest thing in the world. I, know. I mean, there are a lot of people to convince. And uh, we'd be sitting down uh, having Sunday dinner, and I'd be just in town for a few days, and my father would come up with questions like, how come they're not playing a record on the radio? Oh, they're not playing it because I called all the radio stations and told them, please don't play the record. (laughs) Whatever you do, I don't want another hit. How come? I wish I knew. Yeah, I want you to tell this man about a habit you kicked not long ago. I kicked the nicotine habit. And I was, uh, I was really a, a terrible smoker. Four oh. packs a day. Oh, hello. And, uh, you know, you get to the point where you're smoking and you don't know why you're smoking. Uh, did you do a cold turkey by yourself? Yes, I did. I, I tried a lot of different things. You know, I, I went to the Schick Center and, and gave that a try, and I, uh, that wasn't too successful. Uh, I, I tried hypnosis, and that wasn't too successful. I just made up my mind one day. I said, uh, this is if, not a- if I'm going to stop, it's going to be because I want to stop, right. and it has to come from me. And since I quit smoking, I feel I terrible. There you go, Nick. <laughs> He was going to reach for a cigarette. Yeah. Right on national TV, kick the hammer. Kick the hammer. Do it, but I, yeah, it's something that yeah. you have to make up your mind oh, yeah. to yeah. want to do. Yeah. And uh, I feel 
a hundred percent better since I have quit smoking. Yeah, I know when I work, you know, when I'm working, this is the hardest thing. When you get to working, you're working intensely, or you're going, whoa, 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 whoa. and you don't realize you're doing it. No, you don't. Well, That's I would do it in the most crucial back. times, especially when you're recording. Yeah. I'd be in the studio, yeah, and it would be just that. one cigarette after another, yeah, and it's right. just, it's crazy after yeah. a while. Coffee and cigarettes. We really don't need it. <laughs> right, gang, out there? This man has a new album, and I'm telling you, I have heard it, and it is really something special. You're going to do a song from the album? Sure. Frankie Valley. <laughs> 